everywhere I look, it seems that cash is being taken off the table. I mean, I've spoken about this before, about going to try and find somewhere to park, and then the old pay-as-you-go meters, where you just try and put the money in for a couple of hours, it's very easy, simple, is now being replaced. They're put out of order, and there's a pole with a telephone number, and you've got to pay by your mobile phone, which is very irritating because it assumes that you've got your mobile phone with you, it assumes that your mobile phone is charged up, and it also assumes that your mobile phone is a smartphone, because when you ring the number, it says you've got to download the app, so you've got to have space on your mobile phone to actually be able to download the app. Then you've got to agree to the terms and conditions of that uh, app, the parking app, so that you can park your car on a street that you, especially if you live in the area, that you're paying the council tax and you're paying the highway services in your, uh, in your motor tax to park there in the first place. And yet you've got to pay a little bit extra and download and jump through all these hoops. And it just seems to me a bit barking and a bit mad and a bit stupid. Whereas in the old days, a simple put the money in the cash machine uh, in the parking meter seemed to be a very logical and easy and simple way and you just got on with your life instead of having all these interruptions. And then somebody emailed me to to name a chain of restaurants which now have decided they will not accept cash. And I wonder if that's really allowed. If you say, actually, cash is legal tender and I'd like to pay for my meal in legal tender, and they say no, then how does that run? Unless, of course, they put, I suppose, a thing on the door to say, we don't accept cash, we only accept card payments um, or digital payments. And if that is the case, um, or app payments, I suppose, if that is the case, if people do want to go cashless, then perhaps most people will just turn around and say, do you know what? That is ridiculous. I don't want to have, to have anything to do with it. Especially in restaurants, after all, it means you can't tip the waiter because you'll have to have that sort of gratuity nonsense put on and who knows where that goes. Whereas if you've had very good service from, let's say, Adrian, but let's say uh, David didn't give you good service, you don't want the money to go to David because he didn't actually give you the service that you required. So cash is such a useful thing. Now I know I've been talking about this for a long time, but it seems to me that there is this huge push uh, an ever-increasing push, a bit like that time when we had that medical intervention, that people were cajoled, they were persuaded, they in fact demanded that they take part in this medical inf uh, int int intrusion, which was of course an experiment. And it seems now there is this huge push, this persuasion, this demand that we become so dependent on our mobile phones that we have to carry them everywhere, even if we don't want to. And it makes you wonder why that we now have to carry these mobile phones. I mean, most people choose to carry their mobile phone, but that's their choice. But now it seems that if you can't buy something, I believe it's Audi that has a cashless shop that you have to have a QR code and you can't get into the shop because there are barriers, a bit like on the underground, um, and that you can then get into the shop to do your shopping and they won't take cash. And I understand that this is what train services are going to do. There won't be anybody there to take your payment in cash. You'll have to go in with your uh, money on your phone. Now, this is obviously priming us up for the CBDCs, a digital type of money that we may or may not want. And some of us don't want it. Some of us are quite happy to pay with real money or what we think of real money as in coins or tokens or notes that is a private transaction. Because when you give somebody a note or a coin or something, nobody else is involved. Nobody knows that that's happened. It's between you and the person that you've given the money to. And that's, that seems to me to be quite fair. I don't need anybody else to know. All right, if I pay on my banker's card, at the end of the day, the bank will know. But it, all the transactions go in at the end of the day. CBDCs, as I've explained before, is one of those things where as you make the payment, there is the potential for somebody to intervene and prevent you from actually making that purchase, whether that's diesel or petrol in your car, or whether actually this is outside the radius that we want you to be able to go to. And that's the problem I see with CBDCs. But 
Here's an even weirder and more wacky idea. If you're being pushed to have to have your mobile phone with you at all times because you never know when you want to buy something, whereas just a, a pocket full of change might have been the solution and you're just traveling light for whatever reason. If you've got to have your mobile phone, that means of course you're, you're trackable and traceable, particularly when this new technology, the 5G comes in, so that the authority figures will know exactly where you are at any one time because we know that our phones are listening to us they're tracking to us that even if you turn them off that actually they can still be accessed and I saw that there was a report uh, in France that the police have had a law passed so they can turn on the phones of people they suspect of anything to be able to listen to them and you think well maybe they could turn on the phones and start listening into us and they probably are already doing that anyway so this move to continually have you uh, have to have a mobile phone to me is somewhat worrying but then there's even more worrying somebody sent me an email and I can't tell you who it is because it was pretty much anonymous but somebody said here's a worrying thought I don't know if you've noticed these UFO stories that are being put all over the place and then there's this I think I can't remember the name of it project something bluebird or blue nose or blue something or other it doesn't really matter but there's a project in which hologram pictures of uh, un unidentified flying objects to give the illusion that there was a, a UFO invasion shooting down at you. And these people said, this is not my idea, but people said that above all of the illusion of this fake UFO nonsense, that real um, real aircraft that is terrestrial owned by governments would actually be shooting down at us and one of the technologies they would use is the tracking to a mobile phone that if you had your mobile phone on you you could actually be targeted and I just think the idea that you could be targeted whether that's far-fetched or not if you've got a mobile phone and you're forced to have to have it with you so that you can make any very simple purchase, a cup of coffee, tipping a waiter, uh, trying to give your child a little bit of money, pocket money, or the tooth fairy is trying to leave a bit of money. All of that, if you have to have that mobile phone on you, isn't that effectively like having a tag, like prisoners have a tag? So I'm just worried that this is where we're going. We're already being tagged and watched and listened to and forced to carry that mobile phone. So now I refuse to park or go into places that will not take cash. I actually leave my mobile phone at home more times. At the moment, I haven't been able to get rid of it completely and I would really like to say do you know what I don't want the mobile phone because I see it as a potential weapon being utilized by uh, the authorities against me an innocent ordinary everyday person who ordinarily is not breaking the law or doing anything unlawful and yet I feel I'm being penalized so I'm sticking to cash it may not be the ideal type of cash but at least when I'm making payments and things Nobody else need know, and nobody else need know where I am at any one time. And I personally think that for us individuals living in the private, that's a bloody jolly good thing. Don't you?